I got to look at Welcome to Jets Rewind. I'm Marty Shupak, and uh, I'm joined by Ray Clifford in Marysville, Ohio. Ralph Sharega has a very deserved day off. Ray, how you doing out there? Doing good. Uh, fall is uh, officially knocking on the door and coming on in. It's getting a little cooler around here these days. Yeah, well, today we had a nice day here right outside the city. And uh, we're all recovering from a big water main break in Times Square, but that's a, that's yeah. from the time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start with a trivia question, which I actually think part of it was given by Ralph Shereg. I'll give him credit. But because of everything going on now, I thought it'd be a good time to ask it again. So uh, I know one part wasn't asked. With all these cuts, Ray, and everything, the New York Jets have had two undrafted free agents. One is made all pro, but he wasn't a Jet when he made all pro. And the other guy made the Pro Bowl as a Jet. Okay, so let me say that again. Yeah, go over that again. Two guys, undrafted free agents by the Jets, were signed by the Jets. This year, you mean it's one? Not this year. Oh. No, no. In the, I'll tell you what. In the last 20, since 2000. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and they're both good ball players, even good ball players for the Jets. One made all pro, but when he made all pro, he wasn't a Jet. And one made the pro ball. When he made it, he was a Jet. Okay. I'll give you a hint. The second guy is one of my favorite all-time Jets. All right. Okay. While you're thinking on that, let me give some updates. We're recording this on um, what's that? Wednesday, August 30th, 5 o'clock. Just so people know, uh, it, it happened like uh, just about an hour ago. Two players were placed on the injured reserve. Carter Warren, the offensive lineman, the draft pick, and Kenny Uboa. So they're going to be out four games. So those are, that's the short-term injured reserve. And they did that because the Jets uh, re-signed within the last hour. Thomas Morstead, the punter, and Nick Borden, the uh, fullback. So, Ray, I know you worried about uh, Morstead, and he's back, yeah. which is yeah. good. A uh, couple of other things. Um, uh, uh, as we know, uh, you know, Bam Knight was put on waivers. He was signed by the Lions, okay, yeah. which was interesting. And Ralph Sharega called me up, pointed it out. They let go of a running back to make room for him on the practice squad. The running back is Benny Snell Jr., the great nephew of Matt Snell, former yeah. great Jets. So that that's kind of interesting. The Jets also had two players that were claimed besides Bab Knight. Uh, a linebacker, Claudin Clarius, Claris, and a player that I like, a, a center guard, Tristan Cologne. Both were claimed by the Cardinals. I was hoping they could keep Cologne, but it didn't work out. Uh, I will go oh, – by the way, the Jets signed two players before they put up their practice squad. One is a running back from uh, the Eagles. His, I can't pronounce his first name, Xavier Valade. And the second guy is a, um, I didn't write the name down, but I know it was a safety from another team. As, Ray, as soon as they signed Valade, I knew that Bam Knight wasn't coming back. That news came out first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of note, uh, the Steelers cut former Jet Braden Mann. So uh, some of you might be interested. And let me just go over the Jets have 10 players on their practice squad. They are entitled to have 16. I'll go over it quickly. Tim Boyle, uh, Zach Kuntz, Adam Pankey, who's an offensive lineman who I happen to like. He's been around four years. Uh, very popular. Tanzel Smart ended up on the practice squad. I know Ralph and Ray and myself are happy. Marquise Spencer, defensive lineman. Samuel E. Guavian who's a linebacker, Caleb Johnson, a linebacker, and probably the most important player we were all concerned about, Trey Dean, a safety, was brought back. 
And Ray, I was kind of surprised. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, Greg James, Craig James, the cornerback, was brought back. I've heard really good stuff about him, but he's been around four years. And Nehemiah Shelton, a rookie um, cornerback. So, Ray, g- give me your thoughts now on the practice squad as it stands now. And um, did you have any sort of surprises from the cuts or anything? Well, all the surprises I pretty much had of the cuts were uh, addressed. I, I wasn't surprised at Bam. Um, I actually, you know, didn't think he did enough in the preseason. I think that saved Michael Carter's job. Um, and Morstead was a bit of a shocker, but I had a feel, you know, after the initial shock of reading that, I, I was like, well, he was the only punter. So this has to be a you know, because they would have had somebody else locked up if Morstead wasn't coming back. So then I this was like, OK, this is more of a uh, a thing to keep a guy on the roster and get him back. Um, and so it wasn't as much of a shock the more I thought about it. But um, and then uh, I really thought Trey Dean would make it. But, um, you know, so I'm happy he's on the practice squad. I, I was hoping he would, you know, make it through the cuts, but uh, that was the the main ones. Uh, nothing really surprised me otherwise too much. Um, yeah. Okay. And as far as Ken Ubo and the practice squad, I think we kind of predicted that, which I think is a pretty good situation for the Jets right now. Um, and also Carter Warren on the practice in the injured reserve. I think that's no surprise either. Um, I'm looking at the uh, 53-man roster now, and um, the one thing, and the one guy that I'm not crazy about, hold on just a second, is um, this Billy Turner, this tackle. I, he's he's one of Hackett's guys, but <clears throat> from what I saw, the, the guy's awful, Ray. He really is, and I, I just wasn't crazy about that. Any thoughts on Billy Turner? Well, I'm not surprised they kept him for just those reasons, basically. And he's a vet and he knows the offense and everything. Um, I was a little concerned that um, uh, Dwayne Brown didn't play at all in the preseason. And now he's going to go in there and we're going to hope he's, you know, up to speed to step on the field and play as a starter. I'm, I'm going to be shocked if he actually does and and plays well. Um, but no, I'm not surprised about Turner. I mean, that's not really a surprise. I got a question on one of the guys, and I'm not seeing his name on the list of the guys who made it. And I'm just like, is that the roster or the practice squad? Well, both. And it's it's the guy that I said had the worst. And I'm I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. All of a sudden, the DB that had the horrible first game, but played well after that, and and I can't. Wasn't Bryce Hall, was it? Oh no, DB. Oh yeah, Bryce. Bryce Hall was a shock to make. Well, it to the, the the only quarterbacks are Source yeah. Corner, DJ Reed, Michael Carter, Bryce Hall, and Justin Hardy, who's really special teams. So, um, oh wait, I know who you mean. Uh, Twenty six. Nickel. Uh, the yeah, guy Eccles. suspended. Brandon Eccles. Eccles. He's suspended for a game. That's why you don't see him. Okay, so they don't list him anywhere on here. I'm like, no, okay. he's suspended. Obviously, when he comes back, I suspect that uh, I'm guessing Bryce Hall won't be a Jet. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait. Yeah, as I went down further, there it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Reserve suspended. I was looking for his name just to see where they had him listed, but uh, right, I, right. He was, I forgot he was suspended. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are happy they broke back uh, Zach Hunt's K U N T Z, which I, you know, I and Ralph will tell you that I flip flopped on this guy like a politician. I didn't like him at first. Then I was watching him at practice. He he looked better and better, and I saw him do a few things on special teams. But then the, towards the end, like the last game and a half, I thought the guy was awful. I just can't see how, how this guy's going to stick, though. I don't mind him being practice squad for developmental. The one thing I'll say, though, too, Ray, is that uh, Lakin Tomlinson had a lousy game against the Giants. And this is on top of a lousy season he had. 
I, don't be Wasn't shocked. His first game. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know we are. You know, the preseason's nickname is the overreaction season. I understand that, but I I said this earlier that don't be surprised if you see like <coughs> Connor McGovern or Joe Tippman at center and guard are flip flopping. All right, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know how long they're going to put up with. Listen. No doubt about it, Aaron Rodgers is going to have a huge voice <laughs> with the personnel. So I think actually that's good because I think a lot of head coaches are afraid to make a lot of different changes. Um, I, I have a lot of confidence in Aaron Rodgers. Also, another offensive lineman, Wes Schweitzer, who had a very good preseason, I thought. He looked pretty good. Um, he's there, too. He could play guard also. But, you know, Ray, I think it's good. I want your opinion that they got Elijah Vera Tucker back at guard, and I think that's where he belongs. I think he can play anywhere we need him to, so I'm just happy to have him back anywhere because I think, you know, we're obviously we're a better offensive line with him. As far as Tomlinson, it's the same thing as with Dwayne Brown. I don't. I don't like holding guys out to keep them fresh unless they're injured, which Dwayne Brown probably was, I guess. Was Tomlinson injured or was he just keeping them fresh? Because Tomlinson got no, you know, we're, we're just going at the, the season. Like these guys can just step on the field after not playing in a single game or barely playing in a game and just be ready to go full speed. Um, I'm along the lines of, you know, I've griped about it before that these guys take it, you know, these coaches and the and the league makes these guys take it too easy in the preseason. And it's all about money. It's not about safety. It's not about anything else. Then there's so much money wrapped up in these guys. They don't want to lose them in a in a preseason game or they don't want them to get hurt, you know, in, in the too much practicing, make them hurt. But I, I like, uh, I, I've said it before, I like John Harbaugh's philosophy. We go at it hard. They play the preseason games to win, and they're ready for that season from day one. And I think that's that's the worst thing about the Jets right now is that the offensive line is already questionable, and you you expect these guys who haven't played hardly at all or hardly at all to step on the field and be ready to go in game one against one of our division opponents and the one that's at least at this point predicted to win the division. I, I I just find it very questionable. Ray, you appreciate it to the choir. We've spoke about this ad nauseum, and uh, just so that you know, a lot of the fans don't know that we met up at Cortland, and um, it, nothing was better than that first year at Cortland when they had the double sessions. To me, that was like one of the best summers I ever had at, outside of going to sleepaway camp at Camp Willoway with Ralph Sharega. So I, I happen to agree, and Keyshawn Johnson, he said it repeatedly, too. He thinks the training is is too soft. You know, I, I just want to bring up three players, and um, two of them had really good preseasons, Solomon Thomas and Ashton Davis. And I, I don't want fans to get caught up. Is my neighbor's motorcycle coming through on your <laughs> – What's that? Is my neighbor's motorcycle coming through? On no, his... no, 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 no. Okay, good. good. <laughs> so I don't want fans to get caught up, you know, on how they played in preseason. Yes, Ashton Davis looked like a very good closer on plays. He was a good hitter. Yes, Solomon Thomas made a couple of plays behind the line of scrimmage. But during the year, these guys have shown me very, very little. So I'm not 100% confident. I was a little upset. Um, not knowing if Trey Dean would come back because I would have kept him over um, over uh, Ashton Davis. The other thing I want to mention, too, and, and I don't know what their infatuation is with Jamie and Sherwood. This guy, he's played 22 games in the NFL. He's got one tackle for a loss at linebacker. I know he got injured uh, in 2021, only played like five games. But, Ray, he doesn't show me anything. I mean, are we going to just be patient saying he's only a year back off to Achilles or whatever? I mean, what's your opinion on Jamie Sherwood? Well, the Achilles is much like the knee. It takes a while, and you got to trust it and everything else. It's Carl Lawson we saw wasn't himself until the second half of last year when, when he came 
back. So, yeah, that could be a little bit. And then the other thing I would say in, in both the Jets and the players' defense is that we only see them during games. We don't see how they practice. So that probably has plays into it as well because they're doing something right in practice to trust them on the field or to keep them on the on the squad. I mean, you aren't they aren't evaluating at at least early on and most of the, the whole preseason, they aren't evaluating games. They're evaluating more in practices and things like that because everything in games in the preseason is vanilla. So they aren't going to learn a lot there other than just some basic things they want to see. And we don't see the practices. So, you know, I, I don't, maybe he's doing everything right in them. I don't know. Um, I know, you know, our, our linebacker uh, crew is uh, one of the question marks for me because I don't, it doesn't seem as deep. The defensive line's deep. The backfield seems okay. I'm not sure as, as sure about the safeties, but the DBs are are deep enough. The wide receiver's deep. Uh, running back room is deep. So tight end room is deep. So unfortunately, some, you know, key spots are the ones that uh, make me wonder. But as far as, I mean, I don't, I didn't see anybody else out there that I thought was somebody that I was sorry didn't stay as far as linebackers. So I'm not, you know, I'm not sure it, to me at this point that it's as big a deal as some other spots. Yeah. Well, you know, um, there was a player I liked that is, is, his name I can't think of, but he I think he was cut by the Texans. And, of course, the Buffalo Bills swooped him up. He was a linebacker, and he was actually captain last. He played a number of games. It'll come to me, hopefully, by the end. But I, I, I just don't like this um, Jamie Sherwood. And, and I like uh, Zaire Barnes, the, the rookie, from what, you know, he's shown. He's, he's able to anticipate. He looks like he's got a lot more speed. But, Ray, you, you know, you mentioned uh, also um, different positions. And, I, and one of the questions I have, besides the offensive line, is it the linebackers that you're most concerned about? Or what are you most concerned about? What positions besides the offensive line? Well, I'm only concerned about the linebackers from the standpoint of they aren't deep. So I like our linebackers. That we had. I would have liked to have kept Quan Alexander, but um, I don't. I don't know that that's a killer loss, but I think he would have been better suited to stay on the team than some of the younger guys. But you know, again, I don't see him practicing. I don't know, but he seemed good in the games. Uh, by the so way, that's that interrupt you. Christian Kirksey was the player released by the Texans, who I happen to like, um, and. Um, like I said, he was a he was a captain last year. He played in a lot of games. But go ahead, Ray. Finish what you thought, and I'll get back on this. Um, see. So the the linebackers, as far as the starters are fine. I think I'm more concerned about the safeties because I I mean I like Tony Adams, but and the the guy they brought in Amos seems okay. I, but you know, until I see it on the field, I'm not as sure about them. Obviously, quarterback is a huge concern only because if uh, anything happens to Aaron, I don't have any faith in anybody else at this point. I mean, for, you know, everybody knows what that is. And, and then um, uh, that to me is, uh, are the two worry spots. Yeah. Now, just so people know, and uh, uh, Kirksey actually started out with Cleveland. He's, he's 30 years old. He's played and started in 17 games last year. Ray, he had three sacks. He had uh, seven tackles for losses, which is one of my favorite stats, uh, seven quarterback hits. Now he's a member of the Buffalo Bills. I would have liked him to uh, be on the Jets instead of uh, Sherwood, Jamie Sherwood. And just so we know, he, he's 6'2", 235, which is almost exactly what Sherwood is. But anyway, you can't cry well, over spit. He also know. may only be on the Bills until uh, uh, Von Miller comes back, too. So remember that. He could they're, be. They're going to have to get rid of somebody when Von Miller comes back. So, And that should be after the fourth game. So, Right. 
Now, were you surprised? Uh, the question I have is what players on the team were a surprise, but I'll just expand that. I want to go by position. On the wide receivers, were you surprised that we kept uh, all three of those guys? Not once Corey Davis retired. You told I mean, me we, I, I had no idea we were going to keep all three, like Irvin wow. Charles. I, I'm surprised, a little surprised at Irvin Charles because I really like him. Um, he, he showed some things in the preseason, and hopefully they can, you know, translate that to the regular season. But um, I don't think one of them wouldn't have been there if Corey Davis had. had. So it's a little less surprising because we had a spot open up. Right. Uh, it, and and we, I'm talking about Irving Charles, Jason Brownlee, mm -hmm. and the guy everyone likes. Gibson. Who returns, yeah, Gibson, who returns um, the kickoffs. I'm sorry, the puns, Xavier Gibson, which is, um, I like him. I have, out of the three, Ray, who do you have the highest hopes for? Brownlee, Charles, Gibson. Um, I think Gibson's main thing is going to be his returns. I don't think he, I mean, he can, if Hardiman's out any time, I never heard any more about him on his hand. If Hardiman's any out any time I could see Gibson making some plays while he's out maybe because of his speed and he's he's shifty but I think the guy I think the guy who to me I like is Charles I, I like I, I mean I like Brownlee but I you know as the preseason went along I was you know I, I thought he was okay but he wasn't great I, I like I've liked Ir Irvin Charles since last year I think he could if he's really coming into his own, he could start making some plays. But th that's a deep, that's a deep wide receiver room. So none of those three, other than Gibson for his returns, may get a whole lot of time on the field. So it's hard to really. See. Right, right, it is. Um, Ray, again, we touched on this last week, and and they just had another uh, episode of Hard Knocks and and One Jets Drive, but. Uh, it's starting, I mean, how overhyped are the Jets becoming right now? It's just, to me, it's just, I love my green and white ever since 1964, but to me, it's it's getting to be too much now. They, they already, some Jet fans have us in the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, yeah, we got to, we got to get out of our own division first and make the playoffs. That's the first thing. And we got to stay a lot healthier than we did last year. The hype started with Aaron Rodgers, and it's one of the reasons I wasn't, you know, sold on bringing in Rodgers or any of these other guys is that it, everybody just starts talking us up like it's an automatic. We've probably got the most evenly matched division in football with the four teams. I mean, I think, I think New England, as much as I can't stand – New England or Mac Jones, I think he'll be vastly improved with the the coordinator there, Bill O'Brien, who they brought in, who was his coordinator in Alabama. And uh, Belichick always has his defense playing good. So I think every one of those teams could could uh, find their way into the, have a chance to find their way into the playoffs. So just our division is going to be a dogfight, um, at least on paper from what I see um I just and the Jets have never handled <laughs> success well anytime we get hyped and start showing up on national games it seems like it brings out the worst in them so you know I'm hoping bringing in Rodgers and his whole demeanor and the confidence he brings to the other players is going to be a bit of a settling effect and I just want them to play our, every game in the preseason. Well, not every game. The last couple of games. The first game, Eccles did it. And the last game, Jermaine Johnson did it with the late hit out of bounds. You know, I want to see these guys play within themselves. That defense is the one thing I'm counting on. That that defensive line and and our defense in general should be a dominant defense. I mean, he's got all the pieces – Sala, I mean, has all the pieces he needs now on that defense to really make every game close, no matter how our offense is, our running game or offense is doing. We should be in every game. 
Ray, um, Ray, we, what we have to do is, and what I can't stand going back forever and ever, we, we've got to get turnovers. I mean, it, yeah. I think the well, last it, six games we had two turnovers. I don't ever remember a Jets defensive line in the last 15 I, years. I understand. That a quarterback like this one should be able to. And if they can, that's where the turnovers are going to come. Not just in the hits and fumbles, but – the quarterback's going to be getting rid of the ball a lot quicker if if we can pressure the pressure them and between McDonald and Johnson and Huff and uh, Lawson and Lawson you know gets up to speed. This defense just looks incredible. I mean, I, it's just it's so deep. I mean, I I don't remember a Jets defensive line being this deep before. I mean, we've had some good ones, but. To right. be able to switch guys out and they just keep coming. It's just amazing. Ray, Ray I, I truly believe the blueprint to beat this defense is going to be like three-step drops, draw plays, screens. It's Everything is going to be up close. Yeah, but you can only run so many times. That's what I'm worried about with our offense is that we have, we have no running game that we've shown so far. So, you know, Aaron Rodgers is going to be doing a lot of what you saw in those two series. You know, yeah. quick, quick outs, quick right. headers, and that's right. that's gonna at some point you can only do that for so much. Yeah, but what I, the point I was going to make it is that I want the DBs to play up in the box. I really I want them to play close. I want I one of the ones that can. Yeah, I want one of the safeties to play close because I know, and I'm jumping to uh, you know my nemesis Bill Belichick, but I know he he's going to put pull out every trick in the book with. Um, uh, reverses, you know, all this stuff uh, and, and halfback passes. You watch trying to beat this defense. And, th and you know how Belichick works. He doesn't want to just beat the defense. He wants to make them look stupid and make himself look smart. And I would love, again, I'm skipping to the third game, to throw like a, a 45 or 50 spot on that team. They got to come. Everybody the would. They, we owe them, but, you know. Yeah. You know, they, they we have the talent to – I think we have the talent to handle any of that stuff. I mean, can teams move on us? Yeah. I mean, you're going to find teams that are going to be moving on us, but I don't think anybody's going to consistently be able to do anything on us as far as, you know, I, I don't – unless we're way worse than I think we're going to be, I don't see anybody putting up 400 yards passing or having a 200 yard rusher on us unless, you know, there are some right. serious issues. I think yeah. the defense is going to be what decides how this, how this team goes and then how the health of Aaron Rodgers and can you keep him upright will be on the offense. But, Ray, uh, yeah. It, 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 last question. And we're going to get to the trivia question and close this out. If you want to add something, feel free. If Aaron Rodgers gets injured, how confident are you in Zach Wilson at this point? Zero at this point. I mean, I, I like – don't get me wrong. I mean, I think he has – No, I'm the same way. I, I don't like Zach Wilson. I, I – No, you don't. But I, I'm I'm not saying it from the point no, of – No, no, I know. I hate him. I'm saying it from the point of he hasn't – it's kind of like – remember under uh, Parcells the year that Vinny went down with the Achilles and we had brought in – um uh, who was it? Tupa. I got a out in first game. Name. Tupa you know, or Myra? Rick Meyer. He brought Rick him in. From, from, he had been, he had been. We picked him up from Green Bay, and I thought, well, he, he can learn behind Vinny for a year or two, and maybe it'll it'll help. And then he Vinny goes down in that first quarter, and Parcells puts him in there, and I thought this is the worst thing that could have happened to him. And that's the way I feel it would be with Zach if he, you know, maybe by the end of the year he he'd be a, you know, able to do something. But right now, I think he's he's showing that he's learning some things. But his throws and, and that last preseason game, I was all on all okay with it. Well, Marty, but you hate him. You admit it. So that's what you're saying. No matter what he does. So I'm, I'm trying, to, I'm I'm trying to be a realistic <laughs> fan. You're just being a fan. I'm giving okay. you the Ray Clifford head shake. Yeah, well, except. except <laughs> no, I, brought, I, I, I sent you a text. Um, and, it, and it was you and uh, Ralph. Two years ago, probably. No, 
the, the, the last game when um, when he threw a crossing uh, pass to Xavier G Gibson, who was for, for a nice game. And uh -huh. I said, could Zach ever lead a guy on a crossing pattern? I mean, he even throws it to the body or behind him. And you pointed out that you you did see him he did. guy. And full disclosure, I didn't watch the whole game. I was on vacation. I think it was Brownlee. He hit somebody going across the middle, and he, and he hit him fine. He also threw one behind Gibson, but it did go right through Gibson's hand. So, right. I mean, he wasn't way behind. He should have had that. And then Hardiman on the play that he hurt his finger, that was a beautiful deep ball. And he had it for a second, and then something happened when he went to the ground. And but uh, the the pass that killed me was Zach said no, still, still got it. Some more learning to do was later in the game. I think it was his last series. He had, and I don't know, I can't think of the guy's name because I'm, I'm sure he didn't make the team. But was it Erickson? Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that guy. It was a uh, ah, I can't think of his name, but. He got behind the defense and he was going down the field and all Zach had to do was lay it out there for him. And he had a touchdown and he, he missed him by so much. And I'm not thought, saying he overthrew him. He was going straight down the field and Zach threw it like he was doing an out pattern, like five yards the wrong way. It was that's, just like, how does, I mean, they showed it from behind and it even to me, it looked even worse because you could see the receiver in the foreground and the pass goes that way. Right. I'm just like, what are you doing? That's the Zach oh, I love. I know. And I, I was I was just thinking a little bit before that. He's, you know, he's not great. He's still throwing behind the guys, but he's showing patience in the pocket. He's showing some signs. And then he makes I, that throw. I was like, oh God. Right. I, I'm overly critical of the kid. I admit it. I see him doing such dumb things. Even that yeah. wonderful run he had in the preseason. What the F is that guy doing in a preseason game doing that running? And on that play and a couple other plays, he's diving head first. Didn't yeah. he learn from last year when he got hurt on a nothing play? What's wrong with that guy? I don't yeah. understand that. He doesn't, he just seems he doesn't learn from the, the errors he makes. I truly believe, unless Aaron Rodgers gets injured this year or next year, whatever, that he's never going to throw another pass as a New York Jet as a starter. I really believe that. And look, I hope to God I'm wrong. And he gives us 15 years and three or four Super Bowls. But I, I don't see it. I just don't see it. And again, I'm highly critical. I admit it. Well, I don't think anybody has that kind of the faith. That I don't think – as long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy, he's not going to start another game in the next two years. He might come in for mop-up duty or something, but, but yeah, no, he's not going to start any games as long as Aaron's, you know, healthy enough to play. But really, I don't, if, if, wait, wait, if Aaron Rodgers is going to play two or three more years, how are the Jets, what are they going to do? How are they going to sign him to a fifth-year option? It doesn't make they sense to, to sign him to a fifth-year option. They're going to have to negotiate it. And if he hasn't played and then, you know, you know, it'll be up to him if he wants to stick around. They won't. He he knows one thing. He can walk if he wants to because they aren't going to franchise him. So, you know, if he wants to re-sign with him after his fourth year, he's going to realize that he's not going to get a big. He could sh sign a short-term deal, hoping you know that maybe after Aaron retires, you know, if if it's still the case, but they aren't going to pick up his fifth-year option. There's no way, and they're not yeah. going to. They're not going to franchise him. So. After the fourth year, if he's still here, he'll be able, he'll be free to walk. They'll let him go. They aren't gonna. And and, and that's another thing I, I want to address to all Jet fans because I, I I read the internet all the time, Twitter and everything. Take a deep breath and don't put Mackay Becton in the Pro Bowl yet. He's had a good month, but let me see this guy do it like three or four games in a row. Stay out of the injury tent. Let me see what this guy does. I just don't have a lot of confidence in him. I hope I'm wrong. He's looked very good uh, over the summer. So I'm hope I'm wrong about him, Ray. Any thoughts about Becton? No, we all do. I don't. How can you have any, you know, expectations that he's going to be great just because he had a, a couple of good preseason games and not even, he didn't even play a lot in the preseason. So we got to see that he can last. I, I mean, it was, you know, it was a positive sign. He's, he's been healthy. He's, uh, 
he stayed on the field when they wanted him to. Now, now let's see if he can make it through a whole NFL game or 17. And, um, you know, so I don't, I don't have any high expectations at this point, but I'm hopeful because at least, you know, at least he seems like he's in good shape and healthy and seems to, uh, be doing well on the right side, even though he didn't want to go there in the beginning. I mean, I, I mean, I think that everything about the Jets this year is overhyped and expectations. And to me, that's never been a good sign when it comes to the Jets. It's all, I'm, I'm the, just the opposite. The, the more we become, you know, talked about and everybody's talking about us and everything, the more I feel like it's a doomsday thing, you know? Right. So I hope, you know, obviously I'm like everybody else. I hope for the, I hope we just lightning in a bottle and everything goes really well, but I've been a Jets fan too long to expect it. I hope it, I hope, I hope every week we we're going to win, but expect it. Yeah. Right. I, know. I think we got, I mean, this is the best team talent wise we've had in it's, it is a long down. time, uh, at least since the Rex era in my mind was the last time we were this stocked with talent. Yeah. That is it. All right, Ray, anything you want to add? You have the floor at all. Anything? Uh, just to, uh, and maybe you know, I, you know, I'm glad we brought Trey Dean back because um, I really was hopeful. I am Tanzel Smart, um, but you did mention that a couple teams showed interest. Now, I don't know if the practice squad's different from how it was to get him on the practice squad where it was waivers. So other teams talk to him. Apparently they make him offers. He doesn't have to accept, but I thought guys could take guys off our practice squad and they didn't. And I didn't think the player was allowed to decline it, but maybe they can. I don't know exactly. Uh, uh, I know they have to go on to the other teams, 53 man. So I was wondering if, if, uh, if Dean is really, with us, or if he's going to be just, you know, snapped up by somebody. I, in in all uh, candor, and again, I try to put myself in their position, there's such a difference in your weekly pay if you're on the practice squad or the 53-man roster. Right. I just can't see any player who's on a, a, on a practice squad because you have to realize they're on a practice squad. They're they're like almost lifetime bubble players, and they're fringe players for the most part. Some develop. No, I'm not saying yeah, they don't. Say, yeah, yes and no. I mean, most of yeah. them, yeah, but not all of them. Right, but I just can't see a guy refusing to go on a roster. Now, from what I know, I could be wrong. Um, that I think the team that he's on the practice squad, they have an option of keeping him, but they have to put him on the 53-man roster. That means cutting someone. I believe uh, that. That's what I said. I'm not sure how it works once the season starts. I mean, it sounded like, from what you said, a couple of teams talked to him yes. when he got cut, but he, he decided to stay. So that sounded like he had the opportunity right. of saying no. And I'm just wondering if there's somebody – Right. grabs him off the practice squad does he have the is it his right to go no i'm going to stay here on the practice squad I, you know i think i may you know maybe can get on the full timer or if once they do that if they can just take him i don't know i'm not sure i know they have to put him on their 53 but i didn't know if they could just go we want that guy right we'll take just so you know um according to spot rack the minimum salary for an NFL player is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars okay. for rookie. Increases to eight hundred and seventy for players with one year experience, and nine forty for players with two years experience. Let me just see uh, what that's they, on the roster. Yeah, let me just see for the practice squad. So let's figure seven fifty. So let that's me just a, see. yeah, that's a pretty nice paycheck for somebody who's. <laughs> well, that's on the fifty three man roster. Right. But that's somebody who's probably going to be on the sideline most of the time, too. Now, the practice squad player is 12000 a week for 216000 for the season, for 18 weeks. That. On that. So, yeah, I know. So that's opposed, but Ray, that's opposed to $750,000. Again, in, right. it's, in it's my a big mind, difference. Yeah, I don't know why 
any player would refuse. I don't care if he's going, um, you know, from the Kansas City Chiefs practice squad to the Arizona Cardinals 53-man roster. I would do it, especially if I had a family to support or whatever. I would do it. And a lot of these guys, you know, a lot of their money goes back to their relatives, as as we know, too, if they're not oh, married. Yeah. So we'll see. All right, Ray, anything else? And we're going to go right back to the trivia question. This has been a good show. Maybe we'll keep Ralph, uh, we'll kick, kick him out of the show for good. The question <laughs> is, in this day and age with it, Joe Douglas has been so skilled getting undrafted free agents. Um, and even before that, if you remember, uh, McCagden got Robbie Anderson, who was just cut by uh, the Dolphins. Uh, Robbie chose an Anderson. Anyway, two Jets that were undrafted free agents since the year 2000, one made an all pro, but he wasn't a jet. And one made a pro bowl and he was a jet. Who were they? I I literally have no clue. Okay. I, I, we were talking so much I didn't have time to all really. Right. Here, here, here's the answer. The one that made all pro but not as a jet was nose tackle Damon Harrison. Oh, okay. Max. He made it into on the Giants. Yeah, 2017 is a choice. We yeah. all didn't want, you know, it's funny because we, we didn't all want to lose him. We didn't want to lose him, but we knew we no. would. And I think they couldn't keep him for whatever it is. He signed for a lot of money. Good for yeah. him. And yeah. the other player is one of my all time favorites, uh, offensive guard Brandon Moore. Oh, In yeah. 2011, yeah. he did make the Pro Bowl. I loved him because yeah. I think in his whole career, he missed like five games. So anyway, so with that said, we are going to wrap this up. We're going to be on next week, and uh, hopefully we'll have Ralph Sharega back oh. wherever he is. So, Ray, we will – Preseason. What's that? Preseason finale. Uh, well, probably before the regular season. Yeah. We'll go like, you know, Wednesday or Thursday. I know Thursday the I, Chiefs play the Lions. That's the opening game. I think so, yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll see Bam Knight. If you need to bring him up to the squad. All right. For Ray Clifford and Marty Shupak and Jets Rewind, check out our site. Make sure you listen to our Jets Two Minute Tuesday on every Tuesday. Until next time.